För ungefär 56 miljoner år sedan så ökade temperaturen globalt med 5 grader under en period på 10 000 år. Något som fick stora konsekvenser för allt levande på planeten. Most species that lived on this planet are no longer with us. When climate change, a species has three options. It either adapts to the new conditions or it moves to a new region where it could find the same kind of environmental conditions and climate or it will just perish and die out. Den klimatförändring vi upplever idag är tio gånger snabbare än någonsin tidigare. Men trots att miljöfrågor diskuteras allt flitigare så är det fortfarande många som inte förstår hur viktig den biologiska mångfalden är för oss människor, menar biologen Alexandre Antonelli. We depend on biodiversity for most of the medicines we are using today. All the clothes we are wearing, the wood we are building our houses with. But we also could see biodiversity like an airplane. You could pick out screws from this airplane one at a time and continue for hundreds of times. But at some point you have taken the last screw uh, that was needed to keep the airplane together and the whole thing will just crash. We don't know where this threshold is, but we might be coming quite close to it. Så vad kan vi göra för att bromsa utvecklingen? Vilka djur och växter har störst behov av skydd när klimatet förändras? Det är den typen av frågor som Alexans team vid Göteborgs universitet försöker svara på. Och en del av de svaren gömmer sig i Sydamerika. And this is where I come from, Campinas, in the southeastern part of Brazil. So this is a very important region for me. This is where I was born. This is where I met my wife, who's Swedish, and I was working as a dive master here in the Caribbean. And most of my field work is actually here in Latin America. Ämnet som Alex valt att specialisera sig på kallas biogeografi. Med Latinamerika som huvudområde undersöker han hur och varför den biologiska mångfalden förändras i förhållande till tid och rum. Which are very helpful to help identify the species. South America is the perfect place for understanding biogeography. It's extremely species rich. So every time we go there and do field work, we basically find new species and new records for species that were previously known. There are a lot of things still to be found. We are now in the herbarium, which is the university's collection of plants. This specimen is very special because, as you see, it's in a red envelope. And this is called a type specimen. So this is a new species to science. And based on this specimen, we can describe it as a new species and sequence their DNA to see where it came from Uh, who are the closest relatives to the species and also understand how it evolved through climate change. Att säga om framtiden är ingen lätt uppgift. Men Alex och hans kollegor hittar viktiga ledtrådar genom att kartlägga vinnare och förlorare under tidigare klimatförändringar. What we are basically trying to do is to reconstruct the evolutionary history of as many organisms as possible. And we are doing this in two ways. One of them is by looking at the genetic difference among the living organisms. And there are about 7 million species on the planet today. Om man jämför DNA-koden från två olika arter inom samma grupp så hittar man både likheter och skillnader. Ju större skillnad, desto mer tid har passerat sedan de gick skilda vägar från en gemensam förart. På det viset kan man tidsbestämma och ringa in evolutionärt avgörande ögonblick som när nya arter skapades medan andra dog ut. So by doing this we can also understand under which circumstances they evolved. So for instance was climate warmer when this group of organisms evolved or was it cooler? Men DNA har man bara från levande arter. Forskarna beräknar att 99,99 procent av alla djur och växter som någonsin funnits på jorden är utdöda. 
Och vill man förstå vad som hänt i ett ekosystem måste man ta hänsyn till alla arter. Därför studerar man också fossil. Some fossils they can tell us a lot about how the environment looked like in the past. So these fossils actually here from Sweden. It's about 400 million years ago and it's a, uh, a cephalopod which is only found in tropical waters meaning that the whole of Sweden was actually in a tropical zone about 400 million years ago. By tracing the evolutionary history we can find out when different organisms evolved, who are their closest relatives and where they come from. And we are doing that for as many species as possible, trying to really reconstruct the tree of life of all living organisms. Ja, det är som att lägga ett gigantiskt pussel och endast ha tillgång till en del av bitarna. Men varje år hittar forskarna nya arter och bilden av hur arterna har utvecklats genom historien blir allt tydligare. Och även en ofullständig bild kan ge viktiga fingervisningar om hur den biologiska mångfalden bäst kan skyddas i framtiden. We know from uh, our evolutionary studies that species which are more generalist, so those that don't necessarily rely on a single pollinator or a single source of food, they usually do better than others which are very specialist. We cannot save all single species or all habitats around the planet. We have to prioritize. And the way we're doing this is to try and locate regions of particular importance because they have most genetic variation for instance or most functional variation but we have to consider that when climate comes and changes the species might be, might need to move to for instance a higher place when it gets warmer so basically if you have a nature reserve with a moose or a lion that needs to move to somewhere else there'll be roads and cities and industries not linking those different nature reserves so creating uh, corridors and interconnected uh, protected areas is really a major step in terms of protecting biodiversity for the future. <laughs>